I'm Dave Sharp and I'm joined by the Secretary Head of School here at the Folkestone Academy, Wesley Carroll, um, who's here to talk about some open meetings for parents that are happening this week. And I wanted to do an interview about it because uh, lots of parents listen to us and care about how the school is run and so on. It's fairly unusual that, uh, and a new thing that you're doing these meetings. And also a while ago, I interviewed um, Dr. Joe Saxton, um, CEO of Turner Schools, which cleared up a few things. And uh, I wanted to do the same about these open meetings that you've got coming up. I've worked in this building for seven years now, and I don't think we've had this opportunity before for parents to come in and learn about things that are happening but also to have an opportunity to say to to give their opinions as well as to, as to what, what's going on with the school and so on um so firstly in terms of issues that you're going to raise i have a list here which i know from a staff briefing the other day firstly changes to the timetable Tell us about that. Okay, so we're going to make some changes to the start and end time of the day. So lessons will now begin at 9 o'clock, but the school will be open from 8.15 for students to arrive. There'll be a free breakfast for all, as well as the chance to take part in some activities, sports activities and other clubs at that time. Uh, within the day, we'll have five one-hour lessons, and uh, break is going to be made a little bit shorter, uh, but lunch is going to be made a little bit longer, and that's the information that uh, students were telling us, that the, the things that they wanted to be a little bit different about lesson times and and the, the, the breaks and lunches. Um, every day is going to finish at the same time. Parents tell us that they wanted that consistent finish. That time is going to be 3.30. And uh, after school, we'll have a whole range of activities and clubs that students can get involved in. OK. And just to clarify, at the beginning of the day, um, as I understand it, they have to be in by nine o'clock for their first lesson but they, they don't actually have to be in at 8 30 which was the is the current they time. don't have to be at 8 30 i'm hoping that they're going to make use of that time to do something worthwhile or at least get a good hearty breakfast before they they start their okay. lessons but in time for lessons to begin at nine o'clock okay um, next, moving on to uniform, run us through briefly the uniform changes that happen. Okay, so the first thing is, every day students come up to me and say, are we going to have purple blazers? So I'd like to say really clearly, no purple blazers. Not a lot changes. Surely you considered that. Though, right? uh, well, it's a nice colour, but no, we, we were never going to have purple blazers. Okay. Maybe for staff. Um, the, um, the uniform stays essentially the same. We're making a small change to the blazer, but um, that's just to do with the school logo. People won't need to buy new ones. Um, star... Uh, Parents will be able to buy all their uniform online now, which we think will, will help uh, in terms of making that more convenient. Shirts can be purchased from anywhere. They won't need to be the Academy shirt. They just need to make sure that they are plain white and can take a tie. That's very important. And all students can now wear trousers, which um, is something that the students were asking for. OK. Next, moving on to the document that used to be called the Planner here in the Academy, which had a variety of information in the timetable, um, any sanctions, but also positive comments about the students. It was, it was a fairly kind of sizable little book. Um, you got rid of that in September. Is it coming back? Well, it's not coming back, but uh, there needed to be a break from the, the planner on what it had become. And you're right, I understand, although I've never actually seen one of them, that it was a pretty sizable book. So we're going to go for something simple. We're going to go for something smaller. We're going to call it an Academy Passport. Um, and that'll be an opportunity for uh, students to have somewhere to keep their timetable, uh, other key important bits of information, and somewhere to record things that go well, where they're doing well, and rewards that they receive. One thing that... I believe you're changing, which has been the subject of much discussion online in the past year or so, is homework. Mm. Um, just give me a yes or no answer to this initially. Um, will there be compulsory homework for students here? Um, I know you've asked for a yes or no answer, uh, but if I could just avoid that slightly, I suppose right. the answer to that question is yes, but I want I want parents to understand what homework is going to be like. So homework is going to be focused on learning, um, learning key dates, learning the meaning of words, learning spellings, learning formulas, and of course reading. Our students now have to sit at GCSEs, which are all about the exams that they take at the end of year 11. There's no coursework now in GCSEs or very, very little coursework. So it's unrealistic to expect them suddenly in year 11 to be able to revise and learn so we need to build up those skills over the course of the whole time that they are here and um, so there won't be a, the case that you have to produce something to bring in be about doing the learning and then in lessons we will do simple uh, low stakes tests to make sure that that learning is taking place where it's not will help the students okay so there's some form of homework um albeit be it fairly simple i suppose um, well, now it, well it, it might not be simple because there's, there's like meaty, difficult things that they need to learn, but it will be something that's easy to organise and know exactly what it is that you need to okay. be doing. 
Fair enough. Now, as a parent myself, one of the things that I find it difficult is that um, when I'm trying to help my children with homework, it's a long time since I was at school. And I especially have problems with things like grammatical terms and some mathematical formulas and some of the things done in maths. Um, Some parents may find it difficult to support their children can the school give some sort of support in terms of after school, I don't know, extra lessons? How, mm. how are you going to do it? Because people do need help with well, this. Well, first of all, neither you or any of our listeners need to feel bad about that. I find myself in that same situation with my children that uh, some of the things that they need help with in their homework are, are things I can't remember from when I was at school. Um, so no one needs to feel bad about that. Um, but in terms of the students themselves, uh, as part of our after school clubs that we'll have running, there'll be homework sessions uh, every day um, where they will be able to go and be supported by members of staff off to help them learn how to learn those things uh, and to help them with any of the things that they find particularly difficult and also uh, we ran this year a couple of occasions English and Maths did sessions where students and their parents could work together in an evening and learn uh, the processes around particular aspects of whether it was writing for English or Maths so there'll be more of those opportunities as well. Okay, um, moving on to communication, which uh, is something that Joe Saxton mentioned as something that uh, could be improved uh, when I spoke to her recently. Um, what are you going to do to improve communication between the school and parents? Well, I think the passport will help with that. Um, but something that's really important is that we have to work together. Parents, school, um, we have to work together to make sure that we are setting up these young people with the best possible chance of living successful, fulfilled lives. So that teamwork is really important. And if, if the communication is what it should be on, on in both directions, then, then those things can start to break down. So we're going to have bulletins. Um, there's coffee mornings that we run twice a week to come and have a coffee with me and talk about any issues that you may you may wish to talk about uh, we started those in february and they will be continuing um, we're also going to start a parents forum which could be about us giving information about particular aspects of school whether that's how we assess or keeping children safe online e-safety or also about us finding out how um, what parents view is on the things that we are doing so it, communication is really important it hasn't always been this year as good as i would like it to be but it's definitely something that's going to improve and is going to be a focus of what we're doing for the new year Okay, moving on to a few things which I've picked up on online in terms of negative feedback for the school over the past year. Now, a lot of these issues, granted, you will see on social media regarding absolutely any school in the country, I get that, but there are some recurring issues which which we see over and over again. Um, Firstly, bullying in this school. Um, Do you think it's a problem? And more importantly, um, are you taking steps to improve uh, the bullying situation. So, first of all, um, you know, bullying is a is a word that gets used to describe a whole range of things, from students who fall out in the morning uh, and you know convinced that they are being bullied, and by the afternoon they're best of friends again. Uh, so, bullying gets used a lot, and it goes right through to you know to some extreme uh, examples as well. So, I want to be really clear that we take bullying very seriously. There's no sense that we brush things under the carpet or don't want to tackle or deal with things. We absolutely do. We appointed earlier this year a well-being mentor who does some work around bullying, around students who are feeling like they uh, are not having the best and happiest of times at school, but also about recording the information uh, around incidents of bullying and making sure that we are spotting trends and recurring uh, issues. Uh, bullying is something that absolutely needs to tack- to be tackled. Bullying, unfortunately, is something that does occur in all schools and, in fact, I think in all walks of life. Um, but we take it very seriously and where we are, where we find out about bullying, where students tell us what is going on or parents uh, tell us what is going on, we are able to take measures and uh, take steps to make sure that that comes to an end. Okay, moving on to behaviour, which is one of these things which is discussed <coughs> a lot uh, regarding any school. What changes are you making regarding behaviour and its management from September? Well, over the course of this year, we've made a number of changes as the years has gone as the year has gone on, uh, and we haven't always communicated them as well as we could to parents. So, I uh, apologise for that first of all. But one of the things that, that has needed to change over this year here is students moving from a time where they are governed by their the sanction that they will receive to them understanding not just that they should or shouldn't do something because of what will happen to them, but that their actions have 
impact on themselves and on others. Um, and there needs to be uh, that shift to continue to take place. We're going to be, we're currently working on a new behaviour policy for the new year, which is going to be uh, using plain English that hopefully will be nice and easy for people to understand. Um, for example, we have detentions, but at the moment we don't call them detentions. So that leads to confusion. So let's call them detentions. Um, and uh, there are going to be um, uh, work done on looking at the consequences that we have so that there's more variety. So it's not just a detention. There are other things that we might do. A little bit like if a student's behaviour has damaged the community, well, they can do something to help repair that damage or to put something back into our school community. So there are lots of things happening, um, and it is all about making sure that the system is very simple and understandable, but most of all it is fair that there is consequence for the behaviour, but for support for all children involved at that, both people who may feel like they are victims of poor behaviour and the students whose behaviour is falling below what we would expect to help them to learn, to move forward. And we're a learning school. It's all about learning, not just for exams, but also about playing an active and full part as a as a citizen if you like in terms of learning though there's been some criticism online of the amount of supply teachers that students get so rather than getting the same regular staff members of teachers um, all the time they're getting quite a lot of star of supply teachers uh, in their lessons is this something that you're going to rectify come september uh, so, I mean, like all, all, all organisations, when there's a, a bout of illness going around, uh, teachers get struck by that the same as anyone else. We're, we are human beings after all. Uh, so sometimes, yep, there are occasions where il illness will strike and we need to make use of supply teachers uh, in order to cover those lessons. Um, but part of the reorganisation of the school that we're doing for September is about making sure that we've got the right, uh, highly qualified, uh, well-trained members of staff uh, in the right places in order to be able to teach uh, exciting interesting lessons to the young people um, and sitting here right now I can tell you we are very very close to having a full complement of staff ready for September and by the time we get to the end of the the academic year I'm confident that all those positions will be filled and we'll be in a really good place uh, in terms of our staffing for the new year. Okay Wesley Carroll thank you very much. Thank you.